Hello, in today's video, we are going to start learning how to graph our trig functions. So you might think, well, we already have plotted things on a coordinate grid, we've used the unit circle, what other graphing are we talking about? And we are going to be talking about the sine curve, and eventually the cosine curve and the tangent curve and their reciprocals, and how they relate to their values around the unit circle. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the concept called unwrapping around the unit circle to get all of our sine values and push them out onto an XY coordinate grid. Now, when we unwrap the sine curve, because we know we can travel infinitely many times around the circle, what we end up happening, what ends up happening is we have what we call a periodic function, something that's going to repeat every cycle around that circle. So every two pi, once around the circle, we're going to end up seeing the same picture on our graph. This is what we call a periodic function. And the period is the distance of one complete cycle. Now, like I just mentioned, in the regular standard sine curve, that's going to be once around a circle, one cycle. But eventually we're going to talk about that as it relates to the horizontal stretch and shrink. If you remember back from previous math topics and talking about the transformations of functions, we can stretch and shrink horizontally. The next vocab word we're going to need is something called the amplitude. The amplitude is going to be half the distance of the range. Well, range is talking about y values, and so this is going to relate to our vertical stretch and shrink, and you'll see what this looks like in just a minute. The domain we've studied before, the set of all possible input values, and the range is the set of all output values. All right, so thinking about our parent function of sine x y equals sine x. This is like having y equals f of x, your most basic sine function. We can talk about the amplitude is going to be half the distance of the range, okay, which we'll get to in just a second. The period is going to be how long it takes to complete one cycle. And the domain and range are going to be the inputs and outputs. Well, in order to get the amplitude, we need to find half the range. So let's start with this domain and range concept. The domain for a sine function would be all the things that can go in for x. Well, what do we take the sine of? We take the sine of angles. If you think about the unit circle, we can take the sine of 0 all the way around to 2 pi, all the way around to 4 pi, and 6 pi, and 8 pi, and everything is very well defined. I can also start at 0 and take the sine of anywhere negatively right? Negative, 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 around as many times as I want. So my domain of the sine function ends up being negative infinity to infinity. But now if I think about my outputs, if I start over here at zero, my output is zero. My tallest sine value is going to be up here at one. Then my lowest sine value is going to be down here at negative one, and then back to zero. So my range, my lowest sine value I ever get is negative 1, and the biggest one I ever get is 1. Now, if you think about that in terms of sine as the opposite over the hypotenuse, this makes sense because our hypotenuse is always going to be bigger than our opposite side. So whatever the opposite number is, we're going to divide it by a bigger number, which results in a number between negative 1 and 1, depending on direction. All right, well, amplitude was half the distance of the range. So if I'm going from negative 1 to 1, my range really is a total of 2, which means my amplitude is half of that, which will be 1. The period is how long it takes to complete one cycle. Well, one cycle all the way around was going to be 2 pi before I start repeating those sine values. To help us visualize what's happening with this sine curve, we're going to look at this quick YouTube video. So as my y values get bigger going around the circle, what I'm doing here is I'm plotting those y values. So these are negative y values getting close to negative 1, back around 2, 6.28, that 2 pi, is going to be where I am at 0. So let's look at this. When the angle was 0, that's what's going along my input, my domain. In goes 0, well, the sine of 0 is 0, so out comes 0. At 
which is pi over 2, in goes 1.57, out comes 1, that's the top of my circle. In goes 3.14, that's pi radians, the sine of pi radians is equal to 0, so I'm touching the x-axis. In goes 4.7, that's 3 pi over 2, the sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1, and then back over to here, 2 pi, the sine of 2 pi is equal to 0, so I'm back to touching the x-axis. So let's watch that one more time. So I started at 0, getting taller, y values getting shorter, back to 0, then getting taller in the negative direction, till they're at their lowest value of negative 1, the bottom of the circle, back around until you get to a y value, because we're talking sine, of 0. All right, so one period of sine is going to have what we call five important points. So we know that we're going until 2 pi, and I said we're going to have five important points, which means we're going to cut off every pi over 2. So pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi, starting at 0. So notice that to get these five points, I've had to create four intervals, or four spaces. The sine of 0 is 0. The sine of pi over 2 is 1. The sine of pi is 0. The sine of 3 pi over 2, the bottom of the circle, is at negative 1. And the sine of 2 pi is 0. So here is one, I missed. Here is one rotation, or one period, of our sine curve. Go ahead and draw that in for yourself. So this is one period, but we know that I can continue to unwrap around the unit circle, and then I'm going to get another loop that matches it. Or I could go backwards and get another loop that matches it. So what we want to think about for a periodic function, this is like a stamp. And we are going to stamp this sine curve over and over and over to get a full, what we call, sine wave. Now again, there's five important points on the midline, high point, on the midline, low point, back to the midline. Okay, five important points to create your sine wave. Notice that the amplitude was one because my range was a total of two. So the amplitude is one up and one down from what we call this midline. The period, or one cycle, was supposed to end at 2 pi, which it did. All right, so looking at this, this looks like a lot of stuff, but we're going to go back to our concept of transformations. So if I looked and I had multiplying by a on the outside, that would be a vertical stretch, and that's going to help us determine our amplitude. Amplitude was half the distance of the range. Okay, well that's going to count as our vertical stretch when we get to transformations. The reason I'm putting it in absolute value bars is because if we're talking about distance, a distance has to be positive. The period we said was going to be 2 pi. Well, if I throw in this b value, now I'm throwing in a multiplication inside the function. Well, anything that happens inside the function actually means it's the opposite of what we think, the inverse. So instead of multiplying by b, I know I need to divide by b back from transformations. So I'm going to say that the period of any sine wave is 2 pi divided by b. And we'll look at this more as we get more in-depth with these. The vertical shift, uh, actually let's go with the c value first, is going to be our horizontal shift, right? It's on the inside. So we're going to shift C units, and then our vertical shift will be that letter on the outside. Okay, so we can vertically stretch and shrink, we can horizontally stretch or shrink, we can vertically move this graph up and down, and we can horizontally shift this thing left and right. The last thing then is going to be your intervals. Your intervals are just there to help you count. So we're setting up how we're going to count along our x-axis. I know I was supposed to get 
five important points because of this graph. One, two, three, four, five. But that mean I, means I created one, two, three, four intervals. So the way I'm going to get my interval is I'm going to take the period and I'm going to divide it into four intervals. This is just to help me count along the x-axis, okay, which we'll practice, don't worry. Intervals is in science class when you have to measure for the x-axis and you're trying to figure out how many data points you have and how to break things up so you can count nicely along your x-axis. We know that the period creates our five important points. On the midline, maximum, on the midline, minimum, on the midline. Okay, so what we're doing there is we're just using intervals to help us count these things out along our x-axis for our sine wave. Okay, so strategies would be to, well, find all the things. And then think in terms of transformations. There's a reason why we study transformations before we study trig graphs. All right, that's unwrapping the sine curve. So what you're plotting is in goes theta, out comes the sine of theta. All right, so in goes an x value, out comes the y value. 